Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 140 of my Poke Vlog. I have a ton of interesting, to say the least, hands to go over on this video, and we're going to get right into them. So we arrive at Orange City Racing and Car Club for the 1-3 meetup game. I buy into the game for $500 before we get down to the first hand of note. I button straddle, and with two limps, I race to $25 with jack nine of clubs. Both the limpers decide to call, so we're going three ways to a flop of king 10 8 rainbow with one club. Flopping open end feels pretty good when both players check to me. Pretty standard C bet. I could have ace king here, king queen, all those would bet relatively small, so that's why I do it with my open ended. I bet $35. Only an early position player decides to call it, so we're going heads up to a turn card, which is the four of clubs. Very good card for me. This is definitely going to be a spot where I continue betting. I get a hand like ace-10, maybe queen-jack, and some of the weakest kings in range to fold. And if not, I have a ton of equity going into the river. So I'm going to size up here, try to maximize some fold equity. Maybe in the weakest kings will fold to a $120 bet. But my opponent does not fold. Instead, he raises... To 275 now i guess we'll just give him the top of range here we'll just say he has pocket tens and against that exact holding i would need 28 percent equity to be able to call as it's 155 to call into a pot of 540 and my hand would be about 33 percent equity so this is definitely a profitable call and there's some left behind to play for which i doubt my opponent would fold for if an eight queen or club comes so i make the call pretty happily let's see a good one dealer nope Eight of spades. No! And my opponent pretty much snap jams, claiming how it's, oh, it's not that much you can call because it's only like $120. And uh, no, Jack Jack High is not going to be a call on this one. All right, we whiff a ton of equity, but it's fine. It happens. Following that with two limps, I'm in a small blind with ace four of diamonds. I raise to $15. Only a later position player decides to call, so we're going heads up to a flop of king nine five rainbow one diamond not really gonna continuation bet on this one already got caught once so when we flop absolutely nothing we're probably just gonna check fold when i check it my opponent checks it back though and when the turn is the seven of diamonds we turn the nut flush draw my opponent really hasn't shown any interest in this hand so i guess we're gonna size up again here going to maximize the fold equity and if not try to fall back on our flush draw i bet 25 dollars and for the second time i get raised this time to 60 dollars well, I'm just not going to fold for 35 more dollars to when I'm drawing to the nuts. So I make the call. And for a second time, I brick pretty hard with the Jack of Hearts on the river. This one's just going to be a check fold again. Not really interested in trying to do anything fancy. When I check, my opponent snap checks it back. Maybe he has weaker of diamonds? Nope. He's got seven five of clubs. So, you know, the, the seven that turned me a flush draw also gave him two pair. Choosing not to go for value on the river, though. Kind of interesting. Following that, this hand I honestly was not even going to put into the vlog at all, but just based on how the day ran in total, I thought it kind of cemented how I was running today. So here we go. We're in the middle position with pocket aces. We raised to $15, hoping with all the people that have been raising me so far, I can get another one to do it here. The small blind looks at his cards a little bit. Looks like he's actually going to fold before putting in a call. So I think his hand is just super weak at this point. And he's the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of 643 rainbow well if he's in the small blind and he already looked like he had a super weak hand i guess this connects with him so much harder than ever does me he has all the two pairs made straights all the sets i have few of them so i'm going to check this one back if we get a safe turn card we can go for some value at that point but the flop's going to check through when the turn is the deuce of clubs completing a four liner on board my opponent bets twenty dollars well this is just a miserable spot but as played, I've super interrupted my hand. He doesn't have to have a straight. He doesn't have to have two pair already. But I think aces are just too strong to fold for one bet. Even on a board that favors the small blind this heavily. So I make the call. River is the seven of clubs. Why wouldn't it be? I do have the ace of clubs, which is somewhat relevant. And now my opponent checks to me. Now thinking that all two pair are just going to check call. All straights are just going to check call. What could I even get value from? Am I hoping my opponent had like six seven like i don't even i can't even guess so not really being able to see a single hand that i think would play this way that would pay off a bet that's worse than aces i check it back and my opponent shows pocket kings so you know 
get, my opponent chose not to three bet kings from the small blind against the wildest player at the table and gets a board that is as safe as possible to absolutely stall me. So I make $35 when I get aces into kings. That is some run bad for different reasons than variance. Well, I'm in my second bullet now into the game for a thousand, not how we've wanted to go so far. For we arrive at our first bomb pot. This one is a $10 hold'em bomb pot, single board. So eight players put $10 in the middle for a single board of ace, seven, four, two clubs. I have king, seven offsuit. But I do have the king of clubs, which is kind of relevant. When I'm in the cutoff and it checks all the way to me, I think it's hard to believe that any of my opponents would just have an ace and let it check through. So second pair, backdoor, not flush draw. I think it's good enough to start building a pot and seeing what develops. I start with a $25 bet. Three different opponents call, so we're going four ways to a turn card, which is a bink king of diamonds. So somehow we make two pair. There's a lot of draws out there. Five, six, clubs, and ace will probably pay off one more street. So when it checks me a second time, I'm definitely going to bet again. I make it $100 this time. But on this card, all three opponents decide to fold. So we take down a bomb pot when we get kind of a goofy turn card following that under the gun raises to ten dollars i look down at pocket jacks in late position i'm definitely going to raise this one up not going to just call for ten dollars i make it 33 definitely a hand i think can help me come to the comeback trail with well the big blind and the limper decides to call so we're going three ways to a flop of king six seven rainbow when it checks to me i mean there's one over card out there but i play this the same way i play if i had ace king pocket kings king queen I'm going to bet small here, rep the king. My opponent shouldn't have any of it too often, so I throw out a bet of $35. Well, both players decide to call. Kind of unhappy to see that. At this point, I can only really continue if I turn a queen or maybe an ace to continue bluffing. But when the turn is the eight of clubs, I can't really see myself betting on this card. I don't really think my opponents have like five, six in range all too often, but they do have like seven, eight, seven, nine, where they where they have top pair and turn two pair or a ton of equity, to which they're probably never folding. So given this very dicey card, when it checks to me, I check it back, and the river is the 10 of spades. Also not a great card, any 9 is a straight now, which, I mean, neither opponent should really have all too often, but maybe that's all wrong, as the small blind decides to lead for 125, and then the other gun player decides to call. Well, I'm 100% not calling, but man, there's a lot of action in these meetup games. And the small blind had 10-9... And the under the gun player had pocket sixes. So small blind just binks a four outer and under the gun just flopped a set on me. So I was pretty much in jail on that flop, but oh well, didn't lose too much. We move tables because we're trying to play with as many people as possible. In this hand, the cutoff raises to $10. I'm on the button with seven four of diamonds. Definitely going to make the call here. Get to play on the button. There's been a few limps and all the other players side to call. So we're actually going five ways to a flop of seven six three rainbow one diamond about as good as you could hope for when you're playing seven four of diamonds so when the preflop aggressor bets 35 dollars i'm not really gonna fold here top pair and a gut shot way too strong pretty easy call all the other players get out of the way so we're going heads up to a turn card which is a three of diamonds so we turn a flush draw and right now i'm just knowing that i can't miss every single flush i play today the fuck you are the cutoff continues to bet for 80. i have actually a straight flush draw so if i hit exactly the five of diamonds i get a thousand dollars on this day definitely not going to fold for that river is the deuce of hearts not a great card for me my opponent checks to me if my opponent has any over pair he's not really going to fold when the three pairs he beats six seven if my opponent was just betting with an ace king or ace queen two streets, I beat that hand. So this is pretty much just going to be a check back. No reason to turn this hand into a bluff. And my opponent had pocket eights. So kind of a dumb river card. I could consider bluffing on ones that are maybe 10 or higher, but not that one. Oh, well, moving right along. I'm in middle position. I look down at ace five of hearts. I raise to $12 when it folds to me. Two later position players call. So we're going three ways to a flop of seven deuce deuce two hearts. As it's a board that doesn't really connect to my opening range all too often, I have a ton of value in my flush draw, and unless I'm trying to rep all the over pairs, which I guess I should be in this point, I can just check this one back and reevaluate turn. When I check, both other players check, so we're going three ways to a turn card, which is the Jack of Spades. Now, the thing is not going to rep Ace Jack, Jack 10, all that stuff. I think it's easier to throw out a bluff attempt on this one. Hopefully everyone just missed because no one threw out a bet on the flop and we can just take it down. I bet $30. The player to my direct left calls. Not a great development. And the river is the 10 of spades. 
Well, spades complete, so I think if my opponent had like Queen Jack or King Jack or Jack Nine, this may be a card scary enough to get him to fold. Additionally, if he just called the turn bet with like sixes, eights, nines, things such as that, he's definitely going to fold to another barrel. So I decide to throw out the bluff attempt. I make it $65, and I get absolutely snapped off. I just muck my cards because I don't need to see it, but my opponent just eventually decides to show Jack 10, so... He got a pretty fun run out for his hand. Definitely helps that I missed, but, you know, that happens sometimes. Next hand of note. With one limp, an early position player makes it $15. There's two callers. I'm on the big blind with king seven of diamonds. Not recommended, but it's 12 to win almost 60. And when I call the limper call, so now it's 75 in there, feeling pretty good. We flop a king on king eight five, two spades and a diamond. Definitely not going to fold to a single bet, but I don't have the betting lead. So when I check, this one actually checks all the way through. Okay, I can definitely throw out a bet on the turn card. Even happier when the turn is the six of diamonds. I turn an open-ended straight and flush draw. Pretty much the dreamest card I could ever hope for. I don't really have to bet too much here. I pretty much have so much of the board locked up, lock all the straights. Have top pair, so can't really get called by top pair all too often. So I've only bet $30 on this one. Two different later position players side to call, so we're going three ways to a river card, which is the Queen of Spades. Spades being the only actual draw on the flop completing is pretty devastating. I check, hoping to get to showdown, but the button has other ideas, betting $75. Oh, uh, if this was any other queen but the spade, I'd call. If this was any card besides an ace or a spade, I would just flick it in, but it's just the most obvious draw completed. I have a terrible top pair. My opponent could be value betting like King Jack some of the time without even spades. So this one's just going to be a fold. And we will never know what our opponent had. But kind of sick to miss another open-ended straight and flush draw. That's fine. I'm in the big blind with pocket tens. Under the gun makes it $10. There's two callers. I'm going to size up here. Hopefully I can just take down $30 of dead money because... I'm not really flopping too good today, so we're going to size up here a bit. We make it 40. Only the initial razor decides to call, so we're going heads up to a flop of ace, eight, four, rainbow. Thinking this is a spot where I'm either way ahead or way behind, and the fact that I do check some top pair decent kickers some of the time, I choose to check this one, go for a little bit of pot control, since if my opponent has an ace, he's probably not folding, and there's not really any actual straight draw or flush draw I'm looking to protect against. When I check, my opponent checks it back, and the turn card is the three of clubs. Still pretty safe, all things considered. I think I can size up here a little bit closer to pot. Hopefully, I can just get value from all the hands that are just middling over cards. King, queen, maybe pocket nines, eight, nine suited, things such as that. So, I bet $80. When my opponent calls, I'm not very happy to see that. And the river is the king of hearts. So, if I was... The hands I was trying to get value from, like King Queen, King Jack, those all complete. Not too happy to see that river card. I check. My opponent checks back. Ace five suited. So not a great result for me. So now we're in for about two thousand dollars. Haven't really won a hand. You know, just missing everything. But let's see if we can lose money a different way. With a button straddle, a later position player raises to twenty-six dollars. I have King Ten offsuit on the button. Not gonna fold this one. I make the call. We are heads up to a flop of Jack Nine Deuce Rainbow. My opponent continues for a $30 bet. This is a board that I just think favors a caller over a razor more often. I have pocket nines, I have 10 eight, queen 10, jack nine. All those hands are well within my range. So I'm gonna raise this one up, try to rep one of the better ones. I make it $95. My opponent isn't faced in the slightest as he makes the call. When the turn is the nine of hearts, and my opponent checks to me a second time, I would raise bluff middle pair some of the time. If I had like ace nine, I would raise some of the time if I think my opponent has like an ace king, ace queen type hand. And now that I made trips, I would definitely continue. Additionally, I think like a jack is the best hand my opponent can ever have is like king jack, queen jack. And those are not really going to feel good about the middle card pairing. So I think this is a good spot to, to bet a second time. I bet $125. Still have my over and my gut shot to fall back on in case I'm called, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. When my opponent makes the call, probably just going to shut it down. Until the river is the eight of diamonds. Now most of my hands that are bluffing get there. I happen to have king 10, but normally this line I would take with queen 10. So if I had a straight here, I would 100% rip it in. So when it checks to me, it's time to just act like I have queen 10. I gather all the chips I have left, which is a total of 160. 
and I'm about to make a decision worse than the Bud Light marketing team and slide it into the middle and my opponent beats me in there with his call. And he has ace jack. So, you know, the hand that I'm trying to get to fold, he just doesn't care. Just calls, you know, standard. Honestly, didn't really have enough behind in my stack to get a fold out of this, but I do still stand by the principle of this move. If I arrive here with the 10 blocker, I have to rep the queen 10 and go for it. It's just not going to work on this one. Maybe it'll work in the future. If you enjoy the massive puns, please hit the like button. Thank you. Following that, with one limp, I looked down at Jack-9 of diamonds. I raised at $22 because why not? I'm tilting. One later position player calls and the button goes all in for about $125. The small blind calls the $125 and now it's 100 to win almost 300. So I'm definitely going to call this one. I think my hand is relatively live. I don't think there's any chance my cards are dominated all too often and I have diamonds which should be live so I think I have more than 33% equity in general to take this three ways. Well the player to my direct left calls as well so we're actually going four ways which is even better for me. Great odds and we flop a nine on ace nine five two clubs. There is action behind as the player in the small blind has about 150 bucks behind. When he checks to me no real reason to bluff I have some showdown value. I still have to beat the other all in players so I check it back. Turn is the six of hearts, same story, it goes check, check. River is the 10 of hearts, higher than a nine, not great. Still check, check, same philosophy. And we see the button all in player had pocket tens and the small blind had ace jack. So we actually were pretty dominated, but still somehow found a way to flop a nine, just couldn't find another one. Not great. Following that with one limp, I raised to $20 with Pocket Kings, second best hand I've seen today and second best hand in Hold'em. Well, the small blind and the limper call, so we're going three ways to a flop, which comes Jack, nine, five, two hearts. I'm not going to check this one back. I have an overpair, a Jack can pay me some money, a nine, some straight draws, all kinds of stuff. So we're just going to bet $35, hopefully get a safe turn card, be able to continue. Well, both opponents call, so the pot's definitely building hopefully for a safe turn card but we see the king of spades and on this card the small blind decides to lead out for 75 dollars and then the player to my direct right calls now i'm sitting here with top set queen 10 is an obvious draw on the flop that gets there but you just made top set what else can you do calling seems bad your opponent could technically have king queen of hearts king 10 of hearts all pair plus straight draws, pair plus flush draws are pretty live. You're not blocking any of those, which may play this way. And you don't really want to see this three ways. So I'm just going to raise this one up. Hope to make it to at least heads up to the river. Make some of the draws put more money in the middle while they're behind. I raised to $225. And the small blind snap jams. What a gross spot. While I'm thinking about what to do, the player to my direct right folds. King Jack, pretty much the only hand I'm beating at this point, and takes away all my full house outs. So my opponent just has Queen 10. We all know he does, but I only have $200 behind, and the pot is massive. It's the best hand I've gotten. So I guess we're just going to go for our six board pair outs, since two of them are even dead. We make the call, and the poker gods have a very funny sense of humor, as the river is a jack. So no real explanation needed on this one. I play pretty much as bad as anyone possibly could. The times I play more optimally, I run quite bad and miss all my draws. When I have almost no outs left, I somehow spike one. Poker's just weird sometimes. Anyway, I get a full double up. My opponent had a much bigger stack than me, and we are cruising to some profit land. Gaining some momentum, we look down at Ace-8 of hearts. Early position player raised to $15. Four calls, I'm one of them, so we go five ways to a flop of Queen, Jack, six, two hearts. Can we hit our ace high flush this time? Turn this session around. Early position player bets 35. I'm not folding the ace high flush for that price. Turn is not ideal. Seven of clubs. Opponent bets 60 this time. Still just thinking I can't miss every flush in the world. I make the call. And we connect on the river with the ace of diamonds. And my opponent checks to me. If my opponent had queen, jack, and flop two pair, I expect him to just continue with a bet fold strategy on the river. Don't really expect two pairs to ever just check even though the king 10 gets there. Only one hand to be worried about. So I'm going to go for some thin value, get paid by king, queen, queen 10, maybe jack, king, things such as that. So I throw out a very small bet as I'm targeting one pair hands. I bet $75 
and for the third time my opponent beats me into the pot with ace queen so what a fun river card i lose no additional money if i don't turn a pair of aces but like i said poker can just be funny sometimes and to rub salt in the wound shortly after that i saw aces get it all in versus kings when these opponents had much much bigger stacks than when i did previously and uh actually this is a four-way all in the small blind has pocket fours and the big blind has jack nine and they're all in there too that's why the pot's so massive even with side action and poker's funny sometimes the fours flop a set but ace is a bigger one and aces are gonna hold to win a four-way all in and get a massive win that's why these meetup games are fun hands like these happen all the time but not my day i lose twenty two hundred dollars at one three this day across six hours equated to three hundred and sixty six dollars an hour or one hundred and twenty two big blinds an hour yeah we come to these one three meetup games to splash around and play a little less serious a little wider have some fun four buy and still hurts though just when you go 0 for 6 on flush draws, you know, you, it's going to be a loss. You just you can't really come back from that. You know, someday there's going to be a session where I go 6 for 6 and it'll be great. I'll make a bunch of money, be called a luck box, and, you know, I'll take that much more than this way. But if you've watched all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. There will be a fun little win coming up on the next one where I play a little more serious, a little bit more strategic, have some really difficult decisions on that video. Stay tuned for that, and I will see you on the next one.